Dear students, here we are going to discuss about analysis of sampler and zero order halt circuits. Okay. In the previous videos, we have gone through the sampler and zero order halt halt circuit. Here we are going to analyze the zero order halt circuit. Okay. So output of the pulse sampler with zero order halt can be produced by impulse sampled f of t. when it is passed through a transfer function g0 of s equal to 1 minus e raised to minus st by s see here you can see that there is a continuous time signal f of t and it is passed through a pulse sampler so that you will be getting the sampled version of this continuous time signal here then it will be passed through the zero order halt circuit so you will be getting a sampled output that is continuous in nature so here what is saying that the output of the pulse sampler with the zero order halt can be produced by an impulse sampled f of t when passed through a transfer function so what will be the output obtained here that can, that is produced in the same manner see when you are passing the continuous time signal through an impulse sampler and that output or sampled version is passed through a transfer function that is having the transfer function 1 minus e raised to minus st by s so the output will be same as this so this output can be produced in this manner also that is what is say, um, said in in this statement that is output of the pulse sampler with zero order halt can be produced by impulse sampled f of t when passed through a transfer function g0 of s is equal to 1 minus e raised to minus st by s so in the case of a pulse sampler with the zoh the equivalent um, representation of the pulse sampler with the zoh by using the impulse sampler is this one okay so here you should remember this transfer function 1 minus e raised to minus st by s so that is the transfer function um, okay next let us see the frequency response characteristics of the zero order holding device now we have this transfer function that is in the case of zero order halt circuit its a transfer function is this one that means here zoh is replaced by this transfer function okay so we can say that the sinusoidal transfer function of the zero order halt can be obtained from g0 of s by replacing s is equal to j omega we know that sinusoidal response is obtained by replacing s by j omega that we have studied in the second module of the control system so here we can write g0 of j omega equal to 1 minus here it is wherever um, s is there you have to replace it with j omega so here you are uh, writing 1 minus e raised to minus j omega t by j omega here you uh, you can use an identity that is e raised to minus j omega t by 2 into e raised to plus j omega t by 2 equal to 1 so instead of 1 here you can substitute this relation okay so you will be getting the Term, instead of one you can substitute this okay here you can take e raised to minus j omega t outside see here e raised to minus j omega t can be written as e raised to minus j omega t by 2 into e raised to minus j omega t by 2 that is written here so e raised to minus j omega t um, by 2 can be taken outside so the rest of the terms will be here you know a relation e raised to j theta minus e raised to minus j theta by 2j equal to sin theta you can use that relation here so it will be equal to 2 by omega into sin omega t by 2 into e raised to minus j omega t by 2 here you can make simple arrangements suppose you are introducing a t in the numerator and denominator the relation will be looking like this okay so here you can see omega t by 2 term you know that what is sampling frequency omega s will be equal to 2 pi by t or t can be written as 2 pi by omega s so here also there is a t you can substitute for t as this relation that is 2 pi by omega s so the previous equation become g0 of j omega equal to 2 pi by omega s into this term so this is the frequency domain or sinusoidal transfer function corresponding to the zero order circuit so in by using this equation you can plot the magnitude plot and the phase plot for the zero order halt circuit so the, actually the magnitude of the g0 of j omega is obtained by modulus of g0 of j omega that will be equal to 2 pi by omega s into this term the same equation this will be omitted and in order to get the argument or phase 
you are utilizing this one and um, the phase will be is equal to minus pi omega by omega s so if you are plotting magnitude plot that is omega versus magnitude similarly phase plot can be obtained by omega versus phase so you will be getting the curve like this so this is the magnitude response for the zero order hold device and this is the phase response of the zero order hold device and in the case of a zero order hold device you can see that its characteristic is similar to that of the low pass filtering actions so from the frequency response um, curve we can conclude that a zero order hold device has a low pass filtering characteristic that means it will provide maximum gain for the low frequency signals but uh, higher frequency signals are greatly attenuated here that is why uh, it has got the low pass filtering characteristics okay so next we can analyze these systems with the impulse sampling um, see in the previous session also we have uh, gone through an impulse sampler you can see zero uh, you can see instead of pulse sampling we are using here impulse sampler mm, uh, pulse sampler uh, will have a short duration mm, uh, uh, but here uh, infinite uh, there will be maximum amplitude at the infinite impulse actually represents uh, for a short duration there will be infinite amplitude that means uh, uh, if we will be getting um, uh, pulses at uh, uh, we will be in the case of using uh, impulse uh, sampler we will be, we will be getting uh, different samples at um, different instances of uh, time uh, and it will have uh, different values at a different time instance now analysis of systems with impulse sampling means let us see uh, we can represent a continuous time systems uh, and we are using uh, the samples of that continuous time system so, and here the sampler used is impulse sampler so whenever r of t is passed through this impulse sampler we will be getting sampled version of this r of t that can be represented as r dash of t and in the case of continuous time system uh, for getting the frequency domain response we are using laplace transform but in the case of uh, discrete time systems in order to get the frequency response we are using set transforms so uh, here we are representing the system with a um, h of s that is impulse response in s domain and whenever it is r of r dash of t is passed through this h of s we will be getting the output as c of t and in order to get the output we will be using a mathematical sampler that is represented by t of m and uh, at the output side we will be getting uh, c of n t that is a discrete um, output okay here h of s is the transfer function of the system in s domain since we are using a continuous time signal we are using the laplace transform representation and here we can represent the same system by using this um, this one see let r dash of s is the s domain version of the input signal or sampled version of the input signal and c of s is s domain version of the output signal then this signal transfer function is h of s um, so we can represent the uh, c of s as the product of these two so here r dash of s uh, actually the laplace transform of this r dash of t so the set domain transfer function here what we are going to do is we are formulating a relationship between set set domain transfer function and uh, the s s domain transfer function okay that is laplace transform and we are uh, trying to correlate the laplace transform and the uh, set transform okay so set domain transfer function can be directly obtained from the s domain transfer function by taking the set transform of h of s see here h of s represents the laplace transform of the h of t so in order to get the set transform of this we are directly taking the set transform of h of s okay actually for a um, uh, discrete time uh, signal we are getting the set transform um, by taking the set transform of the uh, discrete time signal but if we are given the laplace transform of that uh, particular continuous time signal then we can obtain the we will obtain the set transform by taking directly the set transform of that h of s so we can write h of z is equal to set transform of h of s see we can um, uh, draw the equivalent um, block diagram corresponding to this as let r of z is input and h of z is the set uh, transfer function um, impulse transfer set domain transfer function um, or, uh, then output is c of z is and we can write c of z is equal to r of z into h of z so this is the um, output in the set domain so uh, in order to solve the problems or um, we can use a procedure 
to find the set transfer function from the s domain transfer function so the procedure is that if most in most cases we'll, we will be given the s domain transfer function that is the laplace transform that is h of s we, we we will be given by h of s so first step is we have to find the h of t from the h of s how will you get this h of t from h of s by taking the inverse laplace transform of h of s you will be getting h of t okay once you get the h of t you can just substitute t equal to kt okay so in the second step you can find the h of kt by replacing t by kt that is the second step so in the first step we will be taking inverse laplace transform of h of s so that we will be getting h of t in the second step we will put t equal to kt that is the second step and in the third step now we have h of kt so that is a discrete time signal actually h of t was a continuous time signal now we have transferred it into discrete time signal so we can directly apply the set transform to this discrete time signal okay so you will be getting h of z equal to set transform of h of kt so this is the procedure to find the set transfer function from the s domain transfer functions so uh, this is the theory portions next in video in the next video we can do a uh, problem to find the set domain transfer function from the s domain transfer function okay go through this theory portions once again Mm, and prepare notes okay thank you